Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Whatever time it is for you, I'm Cyclone. It's time for more Let's Play Train Simulator Classic. We're going to get into the urgent replacement scenario today. Now, uh, just before we get started on that, I want to point out that we are going to come back to the 2016 and the Railfan scenarios at a later time. Regarding the Railfan, I actually now have one route at least from each country that I have not done Railfan scenarios for, which is Washington, Baltimore in the U.S., Huddersfield in the U.K., I believe I haven't done yet. And also now this German route in... Uh, Garmisch Park Christian 2 Innsbruck. So we're going to be doing uh, all these Railfan scenarios, all nine Railfan scenarios. And I think I might do a week of just Railfan scenarios as we get up to the holidays because there'll be a chance to relax and just watch some trains go by. So I might do that over the course of a week. I may even just take uh, another week off and um, just enjoy um, and just put another Railfan scenario up in that week as well. I haven't decided how I'm going to do that yet. But for the holidays, I kind of want to space out my content and get a little bit of a uh, break for myself here to uh, just relax and enjoy myself, which I try and do way too much anyway. But uh, as for the next group that we are going to be visiting for right now, I will talk about that while we're playing this scenario today. Uh, I'm getting a call that we're running late now, so I better get to the train. The unit being booked for the 1845 service uh, to Munich is suffering with door problems and you need to save the day. Starting at the sidings at Innsbruck, try the delayed service as far as Hulk Zero. So we're only going to Hawk Zero. We are going to have some stops on uphills, but we're not going to have any downhill stops, it looks like. I'm not complaining about that. Let's get started. Good evening, driver. We are really glad that you stepped in. The schedule of BR442 will be brought to the sidings now. This is the one that has the broken doors, I think. Wait here until dispatch clears you to depart. Roger. We're going to kind of cheat that a little bit because we are able to uh, figure out when it's safe to go. Uh, you can see that we already have one problem. It's called rain. Uh, so we're going to deal with that. Uh, I'm going to move the train forward a little bit because why not? So while we're doing that, let's just put the um, headlights on. Instrument lights are going to be turned on. That's all set to go. We're just going to peek at the front of the train here. And sure enough, everything is running. We, I guess this is a train from Munich. We, yeah, we're going to be uh, having someone take over at... Uh, Hawk Zero. So it is a train heading from Munich. We just aren't driving the uh, whole way to Garmisch, at least, which is good. because That's a bit long. So I'm going to uh, kind of ease my way up to the uh, front here. You can kind of see if I stick my head out the window, our shunt signal is saying do not pass. We are going to uh, respect the shunt signal as we wave at this guy. Hey, you! That might be clear to go anyway in a moment. Yeah, the uh, show junction is set. The uh, track is ready to go, so we're going to go. It says we can go, and that's going to turn to stop as we pass, but we can keep going. There it is. Yep, we're good. Let's go. So leaving the siding at a 40 kilometer per hour uh, speed here, you may now head out on the platform. I figured that out on my own. Thank you very much. So not much to uh, really discuss so far on that. Just go to the platform. That's all it is. I think there's another train over there. Yeah, the S-Bahn T-Roll 02. So that's an S-Bahn to T-Roll. We're going to start braking now. I'm going to get far enough in that I can just open the doors. I don't have to go all the way up to the buffer in this case because I am doing a service. And we're not going to be here very long. So let's just uh, make everyone come to us. Here we go. I'm going to turn the wipers off now because we're already done on this side. Uh, that can go. We're going to open the doors. I'm going to leave minimal brake applied because why not? Reverser can go down. We're going to change ends now. Let's get to the other side by doing that. Gonna, oops, turn that back on. We're going to put you up. We're going to turn headlights, instrument lights on. Everything's good. Oh, wipers. And does this side also say it's going to Munich? You betcha. There it is. So we're ready to go on this side as soon as we have our passengers boarded. I don't know why I just moved the train. And I can't apparently change that. That is fantastic. Well, we're in an uh, altered position for this scenario, I guess. I don't know. But in any case, uh, let's just wait for permission to go, and we will be going. You see all the doors are open, so it's a very small train. Only two cars, it looks like, on this train. Well, four cars total. It's uh, two, I guess it's just one unit. So a four-car train. Please change. Yeah, I already did that. We're on our way. So leaving Innsbruck HBF 
uh, which is, stands again for the main station in uh, Innsbruck, is what that means. We're going to be heading to Innsbruck West Bahnhof, which I guess stands for the West Station. I'll let that disappear on its own. I don't feel like closing that. There we go. So getting up to 40 kilometers per hour, we're going to ease the speed back now. Ooh, didn't want to go for a second. And let's see who is out here. There's the Broken Doors train that we're replacing. And there's the S-Bahn to Tyrol over there on the other side. We saw him coming into the station, so he's leaving ahead of us. The junction ahead just set for us to show a 70 kilometer per hour stretch. Now because I know of the bug that occurred in this route that I mentioned on the previous scenario, I'm not going to be doing any outside the train views while I'm going from Innsbruck West Bahnhof. I don't want to uh, try to, uh, I don't want to accidentally cause any kind of uh, issue with that again. Now notice I got 500 points. That's very interesting that I have 500 points already from that first stop. That means we only have one more time stop and that is a Hawk Zero. So we're on our own to make sure we manage our time effectively at these other stops. That's up to us to do. So again, we have to arrive by 7.08. I didn't see who that was. We have to arrive by 7.08. And for some reason, we have to sit there for two minutes. Fantastic. So uh, we're on our own to manage our time here. And according to my analysis, I believe that's possible to make those stops sometimes. So let's uh, get on the move. and Or we are on the move. Let's get to our first stop. We get to a stop, I should say. And we're going to see what happens as we carry along. Now since I know we're going to be doing, uh, we're not going to be forced to wait at the stations for each stop, I'm just going to bring the train to a stop whenever. And that's really all I'm going to do. That will speed up the stops and will give me more time towards each successive stop. So open doors at Innsbruck West Bahnhof, platform number one. Leaving Innsbruck West Bahnhof. Our next stop is Innsbruck Hotting. Uh, I came upon people walking on the tracks here for some reason. I don't know why they're walking on the tracks. That is not safe. Uh, and I advise you, if you're planning to board a train, don't walk on the tracks unless specifically directed to by station personnel. It is a very dangerous place to be. I have uh, moved my speed up to 60 kilometers per hour. I've chosen not to go beyond that for right now. Logical reason, because the speed limit ahead is 60. I mean, I can't think of a better reason to not go beyond 60 right now. So we're going to respect that. So we are now within the stretch that is covered by that uh, signal bug in the other direction. So uh, if I were to go outside the train right now and then return to the cab, what may happen is that the uh, I may get a speeding penalty that I don't deserve and uh, because I'm not actually speeding. So until we pass the signal fully, this could happen. We may have actually passed the uh, signal itself right now, or that might be it right there now that I think about it. That's probably the signal in question that we just passed. So as I continue along, and I shouldn't have gotten out of the cab yet. That was a bad idea. I got out of the cab to show you something that is going to cause me a speeding penalty. That's fantastic on my part, I tell you. I think we're okay, so I'm going to hop back in. Yep, we're good now. So now I'm going to go ahead and make my stop. Heavy, heavy brake because I just want to bring the train to a stop quickly. That's the only goal here. the brake off because it will be slow to go down anyway. And arrival at Innsbruck Hotting platform number one. Leaving Innsbruck Hotting, our next stop is Allerhelegenhof. I believe there's only one platform there, but it does say platform one, so we'll just say it is platform one. 
I'm getting up to 60 as quick as I can, and that'll do for now. I did not want to break, but I did. So I want to kind of hold at 60 if I can now. We're hitting the uphill gradient that uh, is so helpful for managing your speed with a moving throttle. I'm going to increase that uh, percentage of throttle down to a 30% for a moment. We're going to punch it back to 20, or er, yeah, to, I should say move to 35. We're going to punch it back to 30, rather. And we're holding nicely. So we're going to slam the brakes coming into Adorhelegenhof, and that's going to be um, how we make our stop. We're not going to worry about any other brakes here. There's that red light for whatever it is that joins us back there. I'm not sure what that is. all of our speed that we can utilize here. This is uphill all the way. I can't help but think these people are living on a hill. The houses actually appear to be slanted in some cases, which is kind of interesting. Maybe it's just because we're climbing so they look slanted to us, but they're actually on flat ground while we're climbing. I don't know. I don't know. I never thought about it. I did not want to come to a stop that quickly. I'm going to try to maintain power for a moment here. And now we are going to stop. And I'm going to keep the heavy brake applied while we're loading pastures because I do not want the train to move. Notice the brake goes down quickly and because of the heavy gradient as well. Arrival at Allerhelegenhof. I think the crew at this station needs to learn better how to direct passengers. I saw a guy walk through a fence into a field. Uh, that was interesting. Uh, leaving Allerhelegenhof, our next stop is Crane Bitten, and what kind of passenger hijinks will we find there? I don't know. I just left that in for uh, giggles. You find some interesting things in screenshots in this game, I'll tell you that. <laughs> so we're gonna, I mentioned I was gonna talk about the next route I was wanna cover. I'm gonna use the last part of the uh, route between Crane and Hawk Zero, that's a bit of a longer stretch. I'm gonna use that to talk about um, the things I wanna talk about. And that will similarly limit the amount of time I can actually talk about it so I don't uh, talk on too long about it. And we still have something interesting going on at the same time, so you know. So Crane Bitten is now a kilometer away. The end of the platform, I should say, is a kilometer away. Or the start of the platform is a kilometer away. The end of the platform is slightly further because that's what's on the uh, HUD, which is now a kilometer away. And, you know. our way into the station and we're gonna have another quick stop available yay for passenger comfort they will love me at the end of this journey or at least my part of the journey I actually want to see if passenger comfort actually shows up on here I don't know if it does yeah there is a passenger there you can see they are leaning uh, in one direction a little bit probably because of the hill see what this looks like. I really want to see if they have a bad experience off of this. Oh no, they're actually not having a problem at all. Doors are open here at uh, Crane Bitten. That wasn't bad for them at all.
leaving Crane Bitten. Our next and final stop for us is at Hawk Zero. We can now see the ETA showing up, saying that we will be there in 1906 uh, for a 1908 stop. This is good for us. It means we're doing very well for time. So I'm going to get my speed up to the point where I can just kind of idle the throttle at 30% and go. And that's what I'm doing. So we can now talk about uh, the next route. I'm going to go ahead and announce at this point that I am going... Oh, yeah, that's still not good enough. There we go. Let's uh, be careful because we are actually gaining on this up, which I did not expect. That was not what I expected. Okay, so I can talk about the next route I'm going to be covering. I'm going to be going next to the... Um, to the, um, I they have all of a sudden, the East Coast Main Line South, the uh, route between London, London King's Cross, I should say, and Peterborough. Uh, now, I'm going to be using the basic version of the route. I know there is a version from Alan Thompson Sim, uh, but we're not going to be using that version because I want to show you, again, the default scenarios. I'm introducing the route using the basic version of the route. I may go into the uh, other versions later on, but. Uh, in the case of Alan Thompson Sim, that would require a significant investment. And I'm not kidding when I say significant investment, because if you don't want to pay, what is it, 30 pounds for the uh, route, I don't even know what the group costs, 30, 40, 35, 40 pounds, whatever it is. Uh, whatever the cost is, because I have to convert currency for something that's not on Steam, it means that it just is way more expensive than even a basic route on Steam with the train would be. And is that a bunch of rocks and sand in the tunnel it is not that's an open tunnel never mind so because the um, route does not come with a train it actually detracts from the value of the route so I'm not inclined to want to use that route because the value of the route is down is lower because no train comes with it you're expected to buy the train that goes with it you're expected to buy all the trains that are used in the scenarios you don't have any basic train you can use uh, even the Sarahs that come with the route, you have to have a whole bunch of trains to play in. Like, what's the point of having a scenario on a route if you're not going to be able to drive it? Um, so it just seems kind of silly to charge that much money for something where you really have little playability out of it unless you put a significant expense in. Now, I'm saying that from the perspective of a new player. Um, I've not been playing for a couple years, so I actually have a lot of content. It doesn't affect me as much. Uh, but at the same time, I still look at the fact that it's the same route. It's just a different version of the route. And when I'm saying the same route, I'm talking about the uh, route that goes to Cambridge. Uh, and uh, there is a, an extension that someone's made that goes a little bit of ways along that line, but not all the way to Cambridge. But if you then later get the Cambridge to Peterborough route, which is one I have considered, um, you then get the rest of the journey to Peterborough as well. So you would actually get the full area around that uh, between um, Hitch and Cambridge, Hitch and Peterborough and Cambridge Peterborough, you fill in that whole section by doing that. I'm not going to be doing any of that for right now. I actually plan to um, also at some point do the Moorgate extension, but not yet. It's not going to be installed as of uh, this uh, playing of the route. So you're going to see just the vanilla route at this time. Uh, I am looking at potentially looking, doing the Moorgate extension because I do see uh, it does use just the default assets. It does also have its own set of scenarios. Uh, and it is uh, freeware, third-party freeware. Uh, we're now in the Martin's Wand Gallery, by the way, as we enter the Martin's Wand Tunnel. So I am looking at, uh, I actually have the entire set of scenarios from that route already recorded. So you're gonna, so I'm just telling you right now, I've already played the entire route and everything is um, played and I am enjoying that route. I, do, I did enjoy that route. So I am looking forward to adding the Moorgate ext extension to it. I haven't done that yet. Um, I'm going to do something else before I come back and do the Morgay extension, but I do want to do that Morgay extension soon, sooner rather than later, because it does give me a chance to um, look at another part of the uh, journey there. And um, why not? Why not just do it? Because it's nice to have that little extra extension. I also have to look at the other extension that goes with uh, the East Coast Mainline South as well. I think it's a DP simulation, or uh, maybe it is back to train some, I don't know. I'll have, to, I'll have to check who makes it because I know there is a scenario pack I found on UK Trains and that utilizes it, so I will have a link to it from there, uh, and I can get it that way, but I know I want to add that other extension as well, so I am keeping an eye on that as another scenario pack I want to look at because that will give me a chance to look at another extension for the route. Uh, what I'm not going to be doing is the um, 
I think it's the Hertford Loop. I'm not going to be doing the Hertford Loop because it is not sceneried on the uh, default route. It's another one of those routes where a route was put in the map, but you don't actually have the ability to drive along the route. And unfortunately, the scenery that was used for that route requires, uh, again, significant investment. You have to actually have uh, the route from not only the subware route, the rentware route, as I call it, uh, in the missing link, but you also have to have another payware route, route on the sim. So again, you need significant investment. And unless I get my hands on the scenery assets uh, themselves without buying the routes themselves, I'm otherwise not going to be showing that off. So we're not going to be seeing the Hertford loop at any point, unfortunately, in the near future. Unless a situation comes up where I actually do end up acquiring those uh, routes. But there's no guarantee that's going to happen. Uh, as for after that, I... Had I am looking at Miami to West Palm Beach as a possibility. The reason I'm looking at Miami to West Palm Beach is because, I don't know if I said earlier, but because a number of um, DLC requires it. I think the E8 requires it, or at least an E8 scenario pack does. Uh, there's an F40PH uh, DLC that requires it, and a number of other ones as well. U36, I think, uses it. The U36B. So, um, and more than that, a lot of trains use it. And the scenario pack utilizes some of those trains as well. So, there's not a lot of AI in those uh, services, in those scenarios, in any of the cases, except maybe a couple. Uh, so they're gonna, so they're gonna be nice to do. But there actually is one scenario in the Steam Workshop that I really want to show off. I've seen Matt Pellison himself play this scenario on his uh, YouTube channel, and, uh, and he did on a stream. And obviously, it was cut for his YouTube channel way back then, like in 2015 or something like that. And it is a fantastic scenario. I want to get my hands on that scenario, and I need an excuse to get my hands on that scenario. So after I play the default scenarios, I want to get my hands on that scenario and play that scenario. I want to show it to you. And I also want to see if it still works the way it did in 2015 or 16 or whatever it was that Matt played it. Fantastic scenario. I'm not going to spoil what it is. I may have already given away hints by saying that Matt played it. But in any case, we are now arriving at our stop at Hawk Zero. The train will be continuing without us. We, however, are finished. As we open the doors at Hawk Zero and end the service. So that's a fairly... They're walking through the... I give up. Uh, anyway, that was a fairly simple service. We're going to go ahead and wait for our passengers to decide they actually want to board the train and not walk through it. Um... At least Crane Bitten looked okay. They weren't walking through the train at Crane Bitten. That was, yeah. Um, this is what I get for looking at a train at the end of a scenario where I can't really do anything about passengers walking through. We're just gonna act like this is normal. They're boarding the train, you know. They wanna board the train by walking through the engine. They can walk through the engine. I don't care too much. Um, so yeah, stay tuned next time for the London, to, to, excuse me, London King's Cross. Oh, hello. For the London King's Cross to um, Peterborough route, nice long route, uh, nice um, long, a nice large number of stations we're going to get to explore on that route. And as for right now, awesome work! You managed to arrive on time. Well, yeah. The next driver is already waiting to take over your train. I don't see him. Uh, take the train to Innsbruck and enjoy the evening. I'm I'm boarding that train. I'm going to be getting on board that train apparently. I can't tell you about it because. We're not going to be here to see it, and I'm actually not boarding it. Uh, let's look at the scoring screen, shall we? And there we go. So uh, just two things to note on that. I was on time for both. That's a very easy scenario. As long as you manage your timings at the intermediate stops appropriately, and as long as you do that, you can't fail that scenario. You can only uh, succeed if you manage your stops efficiently and then stick to the speed limit the entire way, especially on that last leg. So... Um, that's a very easy scenario to complete. And you may be noticing that I'm getting zero points on each of these scenarios. Because I actually, of the scenarios that I actually had the um, bad experiences on, I actually had already played the scenarios and scored all the points. So there's nothing for me to gain. Uh, if you do play the scenarios, they will assign points appropriately. You're just not seeing those recordings. So there you go. Now you know in case you were wondering. Um, so the um, 2016 scenarios for the OOB model, those will come at a later time, as I said. For now, stay tuned for the London to Peterborough route. I've been wanting to get my hands on that one for a while because I want to, you're going to get to see finally the Class 365 train. The Class 365 is another one of those models that has Armstrong powerhouse enhancements. Will we drive it in the route? I don't know yet. We'll find out. Uh, but um, 
Let's just say I do want to get my hands on it, and if there is an excuse for me to do so, I will be driving it. If I find a reason to drive it, I will be driving it. But I want to start driving some of these trains because I have to actually use them in uh, custom scenarios anyway. So, uh, yeah, that's it. I'll see you for that. In the meantime, uh, have a wonderful day, evening, or night, whatever time it is for you, your part of the world. If I do get back to the OOB trains before you see this video in my playlist, you will find the OOB scenarios will be behind this. I might put the rail fans first, depending if I have a rail fan week first. But um, whatever happens, the next video will be right behind this. I'm not going to count down to it. I'm just going to say for now, see you next time for more Let's Play Train Simulator Classic. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and uh, have a wonderful day, evening, or night, whatever it is for you. See you next time. Bye-bye.